Okay, so again, going through this one, it's very similar to the test itself. So we have number one, uh, they gave you a soup can. That it says it's a cylinder, which again, uh, they have the dimensions on there. They want you to nearest hundredth of a cubic inch tell what the volume is. So this one you're just plugging in. You have to know your volume formulas. You have to know your area formulas. Again, you have to know a lot of formulas for this test. I really highly recommend, you know, if you've already done this, try the problems again, cover up your answers, try the problems, and see if you know the formulas on your own. So if you do this and you don't know the formulas, that's a problem. You, you, you've got to know the formulas on your own. Even on the FSA for this section for volume, yes, you are given um, some of the volume formulas. Not all of them. They're the most basic format of them. And they don't tell you what they're for. So it's important that you know the formulas in order to do any of these problems still. All right. So on this first one, our volume formula for a cylinder is volume equals base area times height. Again, our base area is in the shape of the circle. So you're going to plug in your formula for area of a circle. So you can do pi r squared times the height. So your radius here isn't given. But again, you can find it. What is the radius on this one? Yeah, so half. So we have pi times 1.5 squared. And then the height is? Four. So now it's just a matter of multiplying. And you can multiply it out. Make sure you read your directions as to how you should leave your answer. So it could tell you in terms of pi. It could say round it. If it says round, you're probably using 3.14. So on here, again, we're around it says to the nearest hundredth, so I would use 3.14. On the test, I double checked, made sure that anyone that had pi, I told you either leave it in terms of pi or use 3.14 and round to the nearest hundredth. All right, question? All right, so this doesn't have to do with like the review thing. Like on the FSA, how are we going to do the triangle thing? With the, um, the triangle thing, I don't know what you're talking about, Frank. What's the name of that small ruler thing you gave us? Somebody. The constructions? Yeah. <laughs> Again, I, I explained that as way off topic. Ask me a few minutes. You, there was an example on the thing that we did in class on the computers. Were you here that day? It's a video. All right. Anyway, so multiply this out. We got 9 pi. Again, if we left it in terms of pi, that would be an answer. But this says around to the nearest hundredth. So times 3.14. 28.26, and that's in inches cubed. Again, don't forget your units. Don't forget if it's volume to cubit. If it's something in a single dimension, it's just regular units. If it's some type of area, it should be squared. All right. On number two. Shh, guys. All right. Any questions on that one before I move on? Again, I'll try to make sure I give you a chance to ask questions before I move on to any of the other questions. To the nearest cubic inch, what is the volume of the right triangle prism below? Now, this image is very similar to an image that was on the last test that lots of people got wrong because they used the wrong base. What is the base on this figure? The triangle. So when you figure out the base area, make sure you use the triangle. Now, do we have all three sides of this triangle? No. We have this side. This side 17, which is the same as this one. What's this bottom piece? How do you know that? So this is a Pythagorean triple, or you could use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side of a right triangle. But either way, this side is 15. So now that we know that side is 15, we can do our formula. Volume of a prism is the same as volume of a cylinder. Base area times height. Again, base area on this one is a triangle, so one half base times height for the triangle times height of the prism. So one half, we have eight and 15. Those are going to be our base and our height. It doesn't matter which one you plug in for which. The height of the prism is the nine. So now that we have everything plugged in, just multiply it out. So for the base area, and if you want to find base area and then plug it in, that's fine too. 
So we have 4 times 15, which is 60 times 9. And then 60 times 9 is 540. And that's in inches cubed. Yeah, again, volume. Volume is always cubed. What was the question? How is 9 the height? Because again, if the triangle is the base, the height is the distance between the bases. Oh, okay. Right? Remember, ca the capital H, shh, guys, the capital H. Again, this was a common mistake as well. Remember, capital H is the distance between the bases. So if this is my base, I'm not going to use height. At, I'm not going to use the 8 as the height of the figure again. It doesn't make any sense. This is the base. The height is the distance between the bases. The 9 is the height. Again, height of the prism. Yes, go ahead. So the 15, again, you either have to know your Pythagorean triple. That's This one was the 8, 15, 17. If you don't know your triple, then Pythagorean theorem. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. You could have plugged in the 17. You could have plugged in the 8. And then you would have to solve for the missing side. So 17 squared is 289. That's 64. You have subtracted off 64. Which is 225. And then square root to get b by itself. Square root of 225 is 15. And that's, again, if you don't know your Pythagorean triples, that's how you can find the missing side. Right. Okay, on number three. This one says Kirk wants to buy a stand for his fish tank. Before he left the, for the store, he wrote down the measurements of the tank. When he got to the store, he couldn't find the piece of paper with the measurements. He remembers that the volume is 36 100 cubic inches and the height is 18 inches and one of the other dimensions was 10 inches based on this information what is the dimension that he can't remember so i even drew a picture for this one so we know the volume formula here volume equals base area times height and since it's a rectangular prism the big b is base times height for the rectangle bottom so this could be my B, this could be my H, this could be my uppercase H. All right. Again, if you wanted to use length times width times height instead, that would work on this problem as well. So we're going to plug these values in. We know the volume. We know, or we call this one X. We call this one 10, and that one's 18. So now, it's a matter of solving. So if we go ahead and multiply the 10 and the 18, we get 180. Divide off the 180. Why don't you just divide 18 and then divide by 10? You could do that as well. Again, it doesn't matter if you multiply these first and divide once or if you divide each one separately. They both work. So again, what's going to end up happening anyway is the zeros would cancel off, and you just have 360 divided by 18, which is 20. So the missing measurement that we needed to know is 20. And again, it's 20, and this time it's in inches. Not cubic inches, because again, it's one dimension. Yes? Are there any points off if you don't put the dimensions? I know I'm taking points off. Yeah. If you don't put your dimensions. It tells you the dimensions. What do you mean? So like on here it's inches. Oh, on the previous one it was cubic inches. Alright. On uh, number four. The radius of a spherical ball is twelve centimeters. What is the volume of the ball? Leave your answer in terms of pi. So on here, again, a ball is a sphere. So four pi r four pi r what was that? Four over three pi r cubed. All right, cubed. Four pi r cubed. Yeah. Again, one of the most common mistakes for this one is forgetting to cube it. Instead, people accidentally square it. So, remember, for a sphere, that isn't cubed. All right, four thirds pi. The radius is given to us is twelve. 
So I believe in terms of pi. So we don't even have to multiply out 3.14. So if we just do the 12 cubed, let me do that part first, you get 1728. Then, again, with a fraction, you multiply by the top number, divide by the bottom. So times 4 divided by 3. That's our answer. So 2,304 pi centimeters cubed. All right, we good? Any other questions on that one? All right. Guys, I, I, hear, I hear lots of talking. Is there questions? Go ahead. I hear? I don't know how you've just been that one value off. Wow. I'm not sure. I'm thinking maybe you just copied something wrong when you... All right. Any others? All right. The only other thing I can think of is, did you by any chance multiply by pi and then unmultiply by pi? So that's probably what it was. Yeah. So I multiplied by 0.3 instead of. Yeah. That, that could have thrown it off by that much. All right. Yeah, guys. Shh. Make sure if you're rounding, wait to the end to round. Because, again, if you round, round off to something too small at the beginning, it might throw your answer off by a couple values in the end. But make sure you show your work because you might get partial credit for answers if all your work is good except for one little thing. So, on number five. This one, Brian has an ice cream cone with a diameter of nine centimeters, a height of 12 centimeters. He puts a spherical scoop of ice cream on top of his cone. Assume that the ice cream scoop has the same diameter as the cone. If the ice cream melts, would the ice cream overflow the cone? Yes or no? So, you have to find two things. You have to find the volume of the ice cream itself and the volume of the cone. So, there's two parts to this problem. So, first, volume of the ice cream, which is going to be a sphere. It's going to be four-thirds pi r cubed. And then the second thing, volume of the cone, which is one-third base area times height. Or you could say, instead of base area, since you're dealing with a circle, pi r squared times height. So, the radius, do they give us a radius? This is our diameter. So you have to divide it in half. So divide that in half, and you have a radius of 4. The other thing that was important, they gave us a height. This is our height of the cone. So plug in your values. 4 thirds pi 4 cubed. And then on this one, we have 1 third pi 4 squared times the height of 12. So, multiply this out. 4 cubed times 4 divided by 3. Now, do I even need to do the pi? No, we don't really have to because both of these have pi in it. If you wanted to, whatever. You, you could do pi. You could not do pi. It doesn't matter. Just make sure whatever two answers you're comparing, you compare them in the same format. So whether you leave them in terms of pi or you don't. All right. On the second part of this, over here, again, multiply this out. 4 squared times 12 divided by 3. I got 64 pi, which 200.96. So, 
Again, this is the cone, this is the ice cream. Would it overflow? Yes. Yes. Why? Because the ice cream has greater volume than cone. All right. Again, guys, I can't stress this enough. You must show work. If you don't have work on this problem, you're not going to get many points. You might not get any. I don't know. It depends how nice Ms. Oswalt wants to be with hers. Because I'm pretty sure on this question, I actually wrote, show your work or you receive no credit. So, again, you need to show your work. And I, I did that on several questions, right? But show your work or you receive no credit. Or give an explanation or you receive no credit. So make sure you show your work. All right. <clears throat> Uh, number six. Shh. Your f you and your friend shh, are sharing a grapefruit that has a circumference of 37.68 centimeters. If you split it in half, what is the volume of your half of grapefruit to the nearest hundredth of a cubic centimeter? So, well, they gave us a circumference. So, before we can do anything, we have to use our circumference formula to figure out the radius. So circumference equals 2 pi r or pi d, either one. Doesn't matter which one you use. You need the radius though, so I'm going to use the second one here. So circumference 37.68 equals. Shh, guys. So again, divide off 2, divide off pi. 37.68. 68 divided by 2, 18.84, divide by pi, which is 3.14 on this problem, it said. You get 6 for the radius. Yeah, again, I said you could use either one. It doesn't matter which one you do. So if you found that the diameter was 12 first, that'd be fine. Once you find the diameter, you know the radius should be half of that. Again, when you get to the volume formula, you have to make sure you use the radius. So I would caution, if you did use diameter, make sure you change it to the radius because most common mistake is if you use the diameter, with the formula that uses the diameter, a lot of people will just plug that straight in for the radius without doing half of it. So I recommend using the formula that does radius so that you already have the answer you need to plug into the second part. All right, on here, now, it doesn't matter your volume formula, I think Ms. Oswalt likes to do it this way. Four-thirds pi r cubed times one-half. No, no, I know, I know. I said Ms. Oswalt likes to do it this way, right? I like to do it this way. Two-thirds pi r cubed. It's the same formula, right? It doesn't matter. Again, if you prefer to do this and then divide it in half, or if you actually have it all multiplied out, so it's two-thirds pi r cubed, it's the same formula. Again, as a hemisphere, make sure you use cubed for the radius and not squared. All right? So we have the radius. Now it's just a matter of plugging in. Uh, six cubed. Hey. Just put it away. I don't know why you're here if you're going to be on that the whole time. Divide by three times two. And then times 3.14. Now, if, if you did this problem and you used 3.14, or if you did this problem and you used pi, you actually should come out with the exact same answer. Because over here, you divided by pi. Over here, you end up multiplying by pi again. 
So no matter what answer you had over here, if yours was more of a decimal, if you had actually used pi in your calculator, you would have got the same answer. Now again, that won't always happen because you're not always going to have to do both parts of the problem like this. So whatever the problem asks you to use, make sure you use it. But this is the answer that you should have ended up with. And again, this answer is in terms of cubic centimeters. So don't forget your units. Now, on the last problem, I'll mention this real quick. I didn't write my units here. I was not asked, shh, guys. I was not asked for my final volume. I just compared my two numbers. But again, if you want to include your units on that, that's fine. I wouldn't have required units on this one just because I wasn't asking for the specific volume, right? So if you found the numbers and then just compared them, I'm not taking off for that. But on one like this where I'm asking for a volume and then you need to make sure you have units. Frank? No, I don't care how you organize your work. It just needs to be some somewhat legible so that I know exactly what you did. All right? So again, if you do it more of like I did in columns, if you do it more horizontal and all over the place, I mean, I would maybe circle like sections of your work then if it's all over the place. Like, so that I know all that's together. Like, if you need to. You could like circle half and circle half. So I know that that's one side of work and that's the other side of work. We should make it so that we're able to tell what you did. Because if we can't read it and you got the answer completely wrong, then there's no partial points. All right. On seven. All right. So yes, this is the one that didn't come out perfect to the density of silver. An artist creates a regular pyramid shown below out of solid silver. The mass of the pyramid is, shh, the mass of the pyramid is this. Use the pyramid to calculate the density of, the, of silver to the nearest tenth of a gram per cubic centimeter. So, first, before we can do density, which you should know your density formula, density is mass over volume. Before we can do that, we have to find the volume. And this is a pyramid, so we're gonna use one third, base area times height. Since this is a rectangular pyramid, we'll use base and height of the rectangle. So this is my height. This could be my base. This could be my height of my rectangle. And now it's just a matter of plugging in. One third, 5.5, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to close that yet. 5.5 5 times 3 times 4.5 4 for the height. So multiply that all out. 5.5 5 times 3 times 4.5 divided by 3. 24.75. Cubic centimeters. Now, density. Weight is given to us. Over volume. So, 259.9 divided by, and last answer is 10.9. Five. That one, yeah, uh, is that one the density of silver? Is it? I don't know. No, 10.49? I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. All right. So, shh. Now, on here, shh, listen, listen. On here, for this one, make sure you include units on your density. If this was a science class, it makes a huge difference in your units when you're talking about density. Because if I had grams compared to like kilograms, again, it's going to make a 
huge difference. So again, you always have to make sure you have units. Grams over cubic centimeters. Same as what these were all in. I wouldn't change anything. There's no reason why we need to convert anything. Grams over cubic centimeters. That means grams per cubic centimeter. Again, that's part of your density. You have to make sure you have your units. All right. On the back. This one. All right. Abraham. All right. Has this cake container. He just wants to know the maximum value of this cake container. Now, look. This looks very similar to the silo that was on the last test, right? Except it's much shorter. The dimensions are different. Do you do you have to disregard any of the areas this time? No. We're doing volume. Volume, we're just talking about the space that this container can hold. So you're making sure you include the entire volume of both the hemisphere and the entire volume of the cylinder. So you have to find the volume of both and add them together. Now, also look at your answer choices. Notice they're all in what? Terms of pi. Terms of pi. So on this one, we should have our answer in terms of pi. So it doesn't matter which one you do first. Uh, I'm going to do a cylinder first, which is base area times height. Whoops. I don't know why I put equals. Base area times height or pi r squared times height. For this one, what's the radius? Six. The height is four. So, pi times six squared times four. So that's 36 times four, which is 144 pi. All right, then for our, our hemisphere, Two thirds pi are cubed. Again, shh, guys, you might not have to ask what it says if you were listening the first time. So, again, we got 144 pi. The hemisphere, two thirds pi are cubed. Again, if you want to do the, sorry, if you want to do the four thirds and then divide by half, that's up to you. The radius is the same. This radius and this radius are the same. So we have six cubed. So six cubed is 216 times two divided by three is also 144 pi. So if we add those two together, it's a total of 288 pi. If, you, if all your work's correct and you got the correct answer, like you multiplied out 3.14, well then, again, you, you, should, you should realize that at the end you're going to have to divide by 3.14 to get back into terms of pi. But I, I wouldn't take off any for that. <laughs> now, if you were, if you just circle that answer and your and your work came to a totally different conclusion, doesn't work. All right, number nine. Shh. Again, for and a plug somewhere. On guys, number nine. Again, you will see a question like this. I will, however, give you, instead of just giving you all the ones to look through and try and find the ones that match up, I'm going to give you one this time to start off and then say which ones are the same as that. Now remember, for this to work, again, this is based on Cavalier's principle. We're only looking for ones that share the same value based on Cavalier's principle, nothing else. So. 
Just because two have the same volume doesn't mean that they go together here. Again, it's based on Cavalier's principle. So again, you either have to be given cross-section area and the same height, or you have to be given base area and the same height. Again, if you're given the base area or a cross-section for either a cylinder or a prism that's the same and it has the same height, it'll come out to the same volume. If you have the cross-section or base area of a cone or a pyramid and the same height, then those would come out to the same volume. So again, they have to be somewhat similar figures. They'd have to use the same volume ratio. So on here, if we look through these, the ones that work, first one, the second one, and the last one, work. Now, notice, shh, notice, these two are prisms. Oops, sorry. But just because they're the same shape doesn't mean that it has to be the same. Because on these two, they're not the same values. Now, on, let's see, on these three that did work, though, we have the same Same dimensions, right? So again, that's the first and most important thing to look for. Now, there was one other one that had those same dimensions. Why doesn't this one work? Because it's a, it's a pyramid. It only has the one base. The other end comes to a point. So the cross section won't be the same at every single height. So that one doesn't work. So this one doesn't work because of the fact that it's a pyramid. This one doesn't work because of the fact that they gave us different values for base and height. Now, going back to this one, would the volume of this one be the same? Yes. But again, it's not based on Cavalieri's principle. So again, you gotta make sure you read the question, but again, using Cavalieri's principle, this does not use Cavalieri's principle, so it's not one of the answers. All right. On uh, number 10, the scale factor of a pair of similar cubes is four fifths. What is the ratio of their volumes? So, if the scale factor is four fifths, for their volume ratio, you have to do what to these? Cube on. What's four cubed? What's five cubed? That's our answer. Yes. Okay. All right. On number 11, the ratio of surface areas. So this time, you're, asked, you're given the ratio of their surface areas and ask for the ratio of their heights. Okay. Guys, shh. I can't hear. Oh, I, 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 I don't care if it's a fraction or a decimal or if you do it as the colon. Any of those are fine. All right. I, I prefer my answers as fractions, but again, it's all the same answer. All right. On number 11, the ratio of surface areas of similar cones is 49 over 100. So again, they're giving us the ratio of, sorry, the area ratio. I need to go backwards to get my scale factor. What do I have to do with these to go backwards? Square root it. So again, I'm taking the square root of these to go backwards. So that would be, square root of that is seven, square root of 100 is 10. So my scale factor is seven over 10. The height use the scale factor. So it's seven over 10. Remember, scale factors for any single dimensional measurement. All right. We good so far? What? So again, scale factor is good for any single dimensional measurement, meaning any any type of distance. So if it's a height, a length, a width, a, a radius, a diameter, 
a perimeter, anything that's given in a single dimensional measurement, meaning regular units, not squared units, not cubic units, but just regular units, then scale factor is the ratio you're using. If it's talking about the ratio of the height, it's scale factor, because height is going to be in a regular single dimensional measurement, right? It could be in centimeters or it could be in feet. It's not in feet squared, right? So again, that would be using scale factor if it's a single dimensional measurement. If it was volume, then we have to go in cubic, yes. Yeah. All right, so. On number 12, 12 is a little more involved, but it's the same idea, right? You have the service areas are given to you. So this time I'm going to write out scale factor, area ratio, and volume ratio. They gave us the service areas are 27 and 48. Now, this one... Are those perfect squares? No. no. So this one would be hard to square root because it's not perfect squares. What could I do to make this easier though? Simplify. All right, if I simplify, I might be able to get perfect squares. So let's see. These can both reduce by what? Three. Three. Which then I have number 16. Now are they perfect squares? Yeah. So now it has some perfect squares. Let's take the square root to go backwards. So again, I'm taking the square root to go backwards. So that's going to be 3 over 4. Now, if I had taken the square root of this one on a calculator, I would have still got 0.75, which is the same thing as 3 over 4. So again, whether you simplified it or not, you can still get the same answer. Now, this is not where we're leaving it. We want to find the volume of the larger one, so we got to go to our volume ratio. So we have to take this and cube it. So now, 3 fourths cubed is 27 over what? 64. All right. So this is our ratio for our volumes. We can use that to find our volume now. So we have the small cylinder have a volume of 135. We're looking for the volume of the large cylinder, right? So you can call it X, you can call it V, it doesn't matter. You're going to set up a proportion. A proportion. Not abortion, proportion. Cross, multiply, and solve. So, 64 times 135. Yeah, let me show my steps too. Since I'm. That's 8,640 divided by 27. 320. That's my volume for my other shape 320 cubic meters. All right. All right, on uh, number 13, Kendra has a compost box that has the, has the shape of a cube. She wants to increase the size of the box by doubling every edge of the original box. After the box is increased in size, which of the following statements is true? So think about this. If our sides are doubling, so let's just say our scale factor is 2, right? So we're doubling, so times 2. Well, then our error ratio would be what? Four, because that would be our scale factor squared. And our volume ratio would be what? Eight, because it's our scale factor cubed. Two times two is four, times two again is eight. All right, so these are the values that we should be thinking about. So volume, this one's talking about volume. Volume should be eight times as much. This only says two times, that doesn't work. This one also says volume. Volume should be eight times as much. This only says four. That doesn't work. 
Volume should be six times as much. No, still doesn't work. Volume should be eight times as much. That's the one that works. Wait, why wouldn't it be, why wouldn't it be two times before it be eight? Huh? Why wouldn't it be Times the original. Again, volume. Volume on here. So we have to use volume ratio. It was two. The scale factor is two because it's doubling, right? But then again, all these are talking about the volume. So what happens in the volume? The volume is eight times as much because compared to the scale factor, take the scale factor and cube it. Two times two times two is eight. Even even if you think about it in terms of a box, right? You could you could look. But that would, if it's eight times as much, wouldn't that be six? Yeah, shouldn't it be four times as much? Because two times four is eight. Two times four is eight. Shouldn't it be eight? Because two times eight would be sixteen. Eight times as much as two. Wait, you're, you're hold on. Two times two times two is eight. Yes. So, what's your argument? So I'm saying it's eight times two. Yeah. If it's eight times as much as the original, wouldn't that be sixteen? Yeah. So it should be. That's how you say what? No. That's how literally. So no, look, look. Yeah, I'm drawing you a cube, right? If this was two, so let's say the original box, all right? The original box was one, all right? One, one, one. So now we draw a bigger box. Now we double both all all three other sides. Two, two, and two. One, one, and one is one for the volume. Here, two times two times two is eight. The volume was one compared to now the volume is eight. It's eight times as much. All right? Again, it's not compared to the scale factor, it's compared to we're talking about the dimensions, right? The dimensions were doubled. But again, the volume is now times eight from the original. We're not comparing it back to scale factor. All right. Okay. Good question, though. Yeah. All right. Uh, number fourteen. Now, in this birdhouse, they want to know how much volume do you have to fill in the birdhouse. So you have a rectangle. Uh, sorry, a cube with a pyramid on top. You have to add the volumes together. So we have. The cube on bottom, 12, you could just say 12 cubed, right? Or if you want to do base times height, base area times height, that's fine. Length times width times height, that's fine. However you want to do it, but it ends up being 12 cubed, which 12 cubed, 1728? So that's for the bottom part. For the pyramid on top, well, I first have to figure out the height. So if this is 12, this piece has to be six in order to make 18, right? So for the pyramid, we have one third base area times height. So one third. The base area is 12 by 12, so that's 144. The height is 6. So, 144 times 6 divided by 3, 288 inches cubed. We need to combine those to get the total volume. So, Two thousand sixteen. All right. Finally, the fish tank. All right. On this fish tank, we have dimensions for the fish tank. We have the height of the fish tank. If you want to label it, go right ahead.
With one fish in the tank, the water level is at 12 inches. So, that was before the castle. So let's say the water level is here. This is 12. Then it rises to 16. So the initial water is 12. This is 16. The entire height is 22. Do we need the 22 at all? No. Shh, guys. All we actually need is these two values here. What's the difference between 16 and 12? That's what we need. We only have to find one volume. It's the volume of the fish. Now, if you want to take the volume of the rectangular prism with a height of 12 and the rectangular prism with a height of 16 and subtract it, you can. It works. But that's extra work. If you just use the difference in the height from the displacement of the fish, you can use that height to find just the volume of the water that's been displaced. So, volume here, base area times height. Base area, 13 by 15. Sorry, 30 by 15, I mean. Height, it went up by 4, so that's what I'm using as my height. So I only have to do my volume formula once. 30 times 15 times 4. 1,800. That is a huge fish. Oh no, that was the castle. Okay, that's the castle. That makes more sense. Right. For a second, I thought we were doing the fish there. All right. All right. Any questions about this? All right. Again, what I would recommend, all right, try these problems again on your own. Try to see if you can remember all the formulas. Make sure you know how to do them. All right. I still have, I still stay for. 15 more minutes. If there's any other questions that you guys have, I can stay for another 15 minutes. Does anybody need me to stay? All right, I'm going to turn this off so I can go.